Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you so much for joining me. Now today I've got not only a full card tutorial for you, but also a really fun collaboration with the lovely Rick Adkins on YouTube. Now if you've not come across Rick before, you'll find a link to his channel down in the description below. Now Rick is in the States, in the US, and we've sent him my Textures Woodlands collection. I'm so excited to see what he does with it. I've not seen his project yet until these videos come out. Out. so I'm gonna pop along and take a look at that drop him a comment leave him a like and obviously subscribe to his channel as well but yeah it's really good fun and it shows you what can be done with one collection hopefully kind of different styles as well so I'm going to be focusing on these three items these are some other items still available in the Woodlands collection there are a couple that have sold out sadly the toadstools have gone and sadly the word strip dies have sold out as well fingers crossed we can get those back links for everything are going to be down below both in the UK and on the US craft stash site as well so go and take a look at those and I'm hoping by the time this video is published we may have been able to get a little code for you to go and shop at craft stash with a bit of a discount again if I have there's the description below everything's in there all the information so the Woodlands collection is primarily a fall autumn collection came out end of 2023 and it features these fantastic squirrels and hedgehogs lots of beautiful leaves ferns and of course wood grain and such we've also got papers with toadstools in there we've got some beautiful scripts just some nice textured papers and then we've also got this kind of uh, woodland stamp set as well you've got the um, wood slice there you've got the birch trees that layer up the log and the uh, I call these horizon trees they're kind of your silhouette trees that you'd pop on the horizon behind some ink blending so these items I'm probably not going to feature today but I just wanted to show you they were part of the collection um, but I am going to bring in another new item or quite a new item and this is the leafy borders they work so well with the Woodlands collection but this is from the textures spring awakening collection okay so we're still thinking about all your all of your foliage there and we are going to be making a spring themed card regardless of the fact that these items came out in autumn yes you can do that with a lot of textures products you can mix and match and change the colors for completely different looks okay so so let's get started with this project so I'm going to start with building up my squirrel I've decided to have the squirrel character in here um, it's super cute I absolutely adore it um, I say it he she could be either now I've got two made up already one in a sort of orangey brown color and one in a gray both with a textured distressed look and they are super simple to put together if you take a look at the dies if I lay one of the squirrel dies over the other it's really just two layers and as you'll see there you get a slight variation in the shape so you've got a larger area around the tail um, also around the tummy which you can only just see and under the face there so you're going to cut one of these from either a white or an ivory or a lighter color and one of them from your darker color which will be your predominant color for your squirrel layer the two up do all your inking and such and this is what you end up with now you notice that one of the squirrels is looking up this is naturally how the squirrel comes but I've just snipped in here and edited the face so I've kind of basically I've cut his head off sadly and just repositioned it looking in a different direction you can do that as well I think I'm going to go with the grey I think that is going to look really cute with some nice pale green some pink florals maybe some yellows thrown in there to really get that springtime theme and to help with this spring theme I'm going to be using the flowers that also come in this set now you do have the hedgehog the hedgehog works in exactly the same way you've got two layers mostly the eyes and the nose all come together in one little die set but for the main body you're looking at just two layers there but there is the floral die you've got the stem too but I'm just going to be focusing on the flower head and the center there so I'm going to get this cut in pinks and yellows lots of those and then I'm also going to cut a wreath a circular wreath from um, maybe pale grey a couple of different greens maybe keeping it nice and light and fresh and then we'll start constructing our card so now all my pieces are die cut I might need more later but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it I'm going to start on my background and my card base 
I know that I'm going to be cutting out a circle from this, an aperture into the front that will fit the wreath around it and then it's kind of a peek through card. Um, but I'm going to ink first of all through a stencil just to create a little bit of colour. So if you imagine the wreath is going to be in the middle, so I just want a little bit of colour and texture around the outside but not too much. I'm going to use this wood grain stencil and I'm going to do it in two stages. So first of all with vintage photo, now like I say I don't want to do too much of this, I don't want to have a block of solid stenciling, I'm just going to have a little bit of texture around where the wreath will be, kind of fade it out as well, I'll probably do a little bit of um, stamping just to add some texture to, so just holding this down and I'm just brushing my um, brush, my ink blending brush over the wood grain here quite lightly, so up and down, trying not to create any sort of block um, ends to my wood grain. So if I take that away, hopefully you can see that's kind of faded around the outside. So that's how that was, I'm just going to twist that 90 or 180 degrees, pop it down in a similar place and then I'm going to come to uh, antique linen, so a lighter brown, this is almost sort of a cream colour and I'm going to do exactly the same, around the same area as well. I don't even need to worry about the middle because that's all going to be cut out, we won't see a great deal of this but just enough for me to want to add this in. So this is kind of filling in the gaps where the stencil was last time and we get a really nice, whoops, let's just move that, really nice textured look. Now this stencil comes in a set of two, there we go, and you also get this wreath in with it as well, which coincidentally actually works really nicely with the wreath from the Spring Awakening collection. So let's just add a little bit of kind of text um, and distressing in there. So as usual, I'm going to bring in my texture stamps and that's going to be my book page background. Now this is also from the Spring Awakening collection, so you can see how well the two work together. I'm going to use a Memento ink, and it's a huge stamp, but I'm going to only be using a part of it, a small part. I'm just rolling the stamp, so I'm just going to take a little bit, like so, and just roll from there. Maybe maybe just a tad more and again just sort of roll it on and off again. I don't want too much, let's put a little bit more there. I want to make sure it can be seen and then use the excess that's on the stamp. Just a second, third, fourth generation stamp around there, there we go, that's plenty, that's more than enough for what I wanted, that's added some really nice texture and detail to the background. Now like I say very often a lot of this just gets cut away anyway which is what's going to happen with this one but it does make a difference having that in the background. So I'm going to open my card up and I'm going to position a circle. Now this is a nesting die um, but this circle I've chosen it to sit perfectly just inside. There's enough of the leaves to be able to attach to the card and some to be kind of just floating in the middle there. So find the centre and adhere that down, it doesn't need to be exact but kind of roughly. I'm going to make sure most of my tape is applied to the centre of the circle because that's the bit that's the waste, that's going to drop out and it doesn't matter if it sticks to the paper a bit too much. So I'm now going to run this through my die cutting machine with the card open so I just cut through the front. So as you can see I've got a little bit of paper left on there and that did just tear a little bit of my cardstock which is why I stuck it to the inside of the circle. So there we go we have our circle cut out, our aperture cut out and now we can start layering. So I'm going to use this squirrel which is a super cute, I mean ridiculously cute. Um, let's pop him there and I think I'm going to have, have the darker leaves actually over the top there. Let's find a little gap in the leaves for him. I think what I might do is pop him on the inside. Yeah, so I'm going to trim his tail down. <gasps> sorry, girl. so sorry, there we go. Oh yeah, that's much better, much, much better. So we can have him just peeking out here like so, 
the wreath over the top and then this wreath can also go over the top of there and when it all lifts up we're going to just have this lovely sort of aperture with the squirrel and the leaves peeking through so let me adhere those I'm going to put glue on the reverse of here and of course if you wanted to you could seal that by putting another panel of cardstock over the top with the same size aperture cut through just popping a bit of kitchen towel inside there because there's a little bit of glue seep out from under where I glued the squirrel and I don't want that to stick to my card base on the inside so I'm just popping that there for a few moments until that's dry now for this I'm gluing around the outer leaves not the inner leaves the inner leaves are not going to be touching anything so kind of the center of the wreath and then the outer leaves only and with this one I'm going to do the same but with this one I'm going to twist it slightly just to make sure it's not sat on there exactly the same as the last one. We're going to be building up so much texture this way. I just love the look of that drop shadow that's appearing inside the aperture when you open and close the card. Now inside I'm going to do a little bit of inking. I'm just going to put a little bit of blue around here, around the centre. It's a nice pale blue. It's actually a tumbled glass distress oxide. And I'm just going to go around the centre and then fade it out by lifting the pressure on my brush. So I've applied that three times. I think that's enough. Then I just go around the outside with the excess on the brush to fade it all out. And then you just see this sort of hint of blue inside. Now I must admit I don't tend to use small foam squares very often at all, even larger ones I tend to stick with the sheets that I can cut down to the exact size I want but these small squares, these are around about 5mm in width and length of course, um, but they're perfect for these little, little flowers here. So I've placed the yellow flowers quite evenly around the wreath just to give it balance. Now for the pink ones they're going to be a little more random. I have lost one <laughs> already in five minutes. I've managed to lose one of the dark pink flowers. I've searched everywhere. I don't know where it is. This one here, this pink one, pale pink one, is actually going to go in the squirrel's hand. I think that would look really cute. So I'll sort of uh, maybe put that. I might actually, I think I might actually die cut the stem for that because if we just look on the die set here, there is a stem that comes with it. So I think I'll die cut that and add the flower that way. The others I'm going to just randomly put, let's put them on with foam as well. Oh my goodness, that is so ridiculously cute. <laughs> I love it. I'm really pleased I went with the flower in the um, arms of paws, or arms of the squirrel there. So last thing to do is to add a sentiment. Now, within the uh, Textures Woodlands collection, we have got some lovely sentiments. We have got hedgehogs, which obviously would work perfectly for you doing hedgehogs with this one, and you could do the card alternatively in that way. I think I'm going to go with a special friend here. These are stamps and dies, so we can stamp our words and then we can use the outline dies just to cut them out as well. So I'm just going to use my stamp platform just to stamp the two words in black ink. This is going to work well with the black in the squirrel's eye and nose, just to bring that kind of real detail and contrast in. And it's going on to white cardstock. I love that I can clearly see through the word dies here. So when I'm cutting out my stamped image, it's nice and easy to see where the borders need to be. So there we have a really pretty card. It's got loads of dimension because those flowers are up on foam pads. You've got the drop shadow that comes through the aperture when you open and close it as well. And then of course you've got loads of space for writing your note inside too. I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget of course to pop over to Rick's YouTube channel as well and subscribe, like and of course comment on his. Um, like I say, if we can get that special code for you, that will be down in the description. So take advantage of that because that will be for this week and only. Uh, so until Sunday the 3rd of March. Hope you've enjoyed this. Have a happy Easter everybody when we get there because this is absolutely perfect as an Easter card or really for any time of year. Take care, I'll see you soon.